91.3 WVKR Independent Radio Poughkeepsie, New York. Peter Gabriel, In Your Eyes, with Jerry Murata on drums. Jerry, my guest today, let's get him on the phone without further ado. Jerry? Yes. Oh, wonderful. We are live on air. Let me do a brief introduction, if I may. And I'll, right I'll start off by saying world-class drummer, producer, composer, Jerry Marotta has performed with countless musicians, including Orleans, Hall and Oates, Peter Gabriel, or, well, I said Orleans already, but I'm saying it again, Indigo Girls, Tears for Fears, just to name a few. When not touring, he also manages two studios, Dreamland Recording Studio and Jersville. He performs with his brother, drummer, Rick Marada as part of the Marada Brothers Band. And with that, we'll talk a whole lot more, but I'll wait, welcome you back to Local Motion, Jerry Marada. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, no problem. I first learned of you um, just right in Woodstock, Uncle Funk. Of course. Oh, oh man, back well, in the 90s or something, I saw you guys and I was like, what? Who are these people? And that's how I started, you know, learning more about who y'all played with. Yeah, that's funny. That's and not so funny. But funny is that I replaced Tico Torres, the drummer in Bon Jovi. Ah, um, in, in, in Uncle Funk. Mm-hmm. And of course, you know, there were many, many different people. But the uh, the recurring characters for Uncle Funk were Tony Levin. Um, Pete Levin, Howie Brown, Bobby Masano, uh, Jesse Graff. And, you know, it settled in to, um, to a handful of us. And, of course, you probably know this, but then very sadly, the, the leader of that band. Rob Leone. Yeah, no, no, no. It was oh. Joe Beesmer. He, oh. oh, yes. He passed away about, about two months ago. Yes. Um, ironically, uh, he had quadruple bypass surgery at Passer. Brothers at the hospital. Yeah, and then it, it came through that fine, and then it, the aftermath was he got COVID and still, uh, uh, and and that really sad because he was our he was our uh, he was our leader. Uh, but yeah, Uncle Funk Woodstock; those were very fun days. Yeah, they were, and it must have been hard to get you guys all together because you were all off touring with all these like you know international people. Well, and. Hence the, all the different players. Right. You know, if I wasn't there, somebody else like Randy Sherlante or, I don't know. And if Tony wasn't there, there would be, uh, you know. I remember uh, Rob Leon. I think Rob might oh, have Rob, been. Rob, Rob Leon was was uh, one of the guys, yeah, early yeah. on. Yeah. Other guy that tragically passed away. Um, his was a little... His his death was a little more senseless because it was I I, I think it was drum related and right. and uh, that's just that's tragic you know that's just shit. That's it shit really bad. is it, and, yeah. Listen, I don't know who you guys are, the kids, these college kids, your college kids, like, have fun, party, but don't die. Don't die. Exactly. Exactly. Have fun, party, but but no when to stop <laughs> and don't die. I mean, right. Uh, Right. You know, you know well, well, Kelly, the other drummer in Orleans, the original drummer, you know, he was another one, you know, like my mentor, my close friend, I love him. You know, he he, he went down drugs, drugs to come down. Right. I mean, you know, with a wife and kids. I mean, come on. Right. Yeah, no, I know. Oh, I know. It's... Anyway, I don't want to dwell on that. It, it's tragic for sure. It's tragic for sure. Jerry, I want to take you back a little bit. I want to say this is your life, Jerry wow. Barada. Your first instrument wow. I come to find was clarinet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Why? The fourth grade. Uh-huh. And, uh, well, in, in the fourth grade, usually, it's, you know, when you take an instrument, uh, then it's usually because that's one that nobody else is taking or they have. You know, right. all the other instruments are taken, or, and you know what's funny? I have it, and I, I should, eventually I'm going to dig it, I'm going to scan, I just bought a flatbed scanner, uh-huh. I'm going to scan my report card <laughs> that my fourth grade music teacher wrote to my parents, Mr. Salingo, and he said, Jerry has absolutely no 
aptitude for the clarinet. <laughs> like, it is just like, get the clarinet out of his hand. <laughs> there is enough play the clarinet. Oh, that's awesome. So, and then you switched yeah. over to saxophone, yeah? Uh-huh. 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 Yeah, How'd absolutely. that go for you? Did that work any better? It was better. Uh-huh. Mm. It was a bit better, and I still have that saxophone. Nice. That I bought back then, but, um, nice. and, uh, and then it worked well enough for me to, I always joke, because I really can't play very well. I only play if I'm on the playing, going to play on a record yep. in front of at least 15,000 people. So <laughs> I, tour, I toured with Tears for Fears, mm -hmm. and I brought my saxophone along with me, and... You know, in the sound checks, I'd just be like kind of blown away at it and playing something, and and then rolling from Tears for Fears. He's like, "Wow, what is that? That's beautiful. I want you to. I, we're going to do this song, and I want you to just start the song all by yourself. Go out to the front of the stage and just play your horn. It was about forty-five second intro. Wow, that led into one of the songs, and then I brought the other time I took it out on the tour with um, the Indigo Girls. And I was playing a solo in one of Emily Salyer's songs. Wow. And then, the, and then uh, we did a rendition of a Tony Levin arrangement of Tequila um, on, on one of his records. Mm -hmm. I got to play, I played saxophone and played the solo um, on that Tony Levin uh, version of Tequila. You know the famous. Yeah, yeah, sure. Exactly. So other than that, I don't ever play. I don't just don't. I don't. But it's good that you have it in your back pocket there. Now, I got to ask a question while I'm thinking of it. When you were with Tears for Fears, was Gail Ann Dorsey playing with them too? No, this is way before. Her. Got it. Way before. Her. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. So, and then after the sax, your brother Rick, tell me what he starts doing and how you followed suit. Well, my brother... My brother Rick started playing the drums uh, when he was in college, first, like he was 18, for the beginning of, you know, first year of college, mm -hmm. which is un unusual. Yeah. I was about 10, um, which is probably about fourth grade, something like that. And so that's when I started playing the, the drums. Um, uh, and uh, my brother just got really good, really fast. And I listened and, and you know, to him and I, I sort of copied as a, as a good little brother would do with his older brother. <laughs> and uh, I copied what he was doing. When he would leave, I would go play the drums. Our, our poor parents, you know, it was yeah. like tag team drumming. Yeah. And, um, you know, one thing led to another. And he broke out. You know, he, he started doing really well. Yeah. And then he... Um, he turned me on to a couple of auditions, and uh, which I, the very first one I got uh, was, was was really awesome. Was, I was that very with lucky. Arthur Hurley and Gottlieb? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. I went to summer. I went to summer school in the summer of 1973, uh, and I to graduate high school a year early, which I did. But that Arthur Hurley and Gottlieb tour started a week before summer school ended. So I went to my teachers, my two teachers, and I explained the situation, and they they let me take my final exams on the road with me, which is hysterically funny. That is, that and is. I, and I, ha I, I know I have a diploma. I have no <laughs> recollection of doing my final exams. <laughs> I was just going to um, ask, did you actually do that or not? But at least you got the no, diploma. Of course I did. Yeah. Of course I did. But um, I do remember that Jeff Arthur, the Arthur of Arthur really got me. His girlfriend Gail was they were they were college you know, they were in college, those guys. Maybe they just graduated. So she was an English major. So I wanna say that she must have helped me because one of the two exams was an English was an English class. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing Gail Gail helped me. And then the other one I don't really remember what it was. <laughs> I, I did I did turn them in and I did get a diploma. That's awesome. And where did you guys tour? In the U.S.? Or where did you tour? Well, with Arthur and Rillian Gottlieb, you know, this is 1973. So our first gig, they were on Columbia. They had a top 40 single. 
And back then, you know, if you're as old as I am, you know, which is like I, I was around back when the earth was still cooling, <laughs> you know, um, you know, top 40 radio was radio was, it was one real major chart. That's top 40. Yeah. And, uh, they broke the top 40. We went touring, uh, they had Columbia records behind them. The first gig we did was we flew to Miami and we opened for Richie Havens, which, wow. you know, as you can imagine, in 1973, Richie, after Woodstock, Richie Havens was like massively huge. Yeah, we went, that was that was my first show with them, and that was just to be 16 or 17, and and just that was just insane. That was insane. Man, talk about a college yeah. education. Jeez, it doesn't get better than that, huh? Yeah, it was that was awesome. Yeah, I was very fortunate. Yeah, and, uh, that that um. That that was great. Those guys were awesome. It was Arthur Hurley and Gottlieb were very much like Crosby, Stills, and Nash. Mm-hmm. That was a big thing. That was a big thing back then. Yeah, violin, acoustic guitar, and a uh, guy played piano and bass, and a lot of harmonies. Okay. I'm guessing. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. So that was that was that was what that was the thing. The thing back then. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. That was and- awesome. Really awesome. it, yeah, that's a great start. And then you got picked up. You 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 tried. I guess you tried out for. You were auditioned for Orleans. Yeah, exactly. How'd you find out uh, about them, and how did you get the audition? That was my, you know again. My older brother. We were recording. We came up to Bearsville to record, um, to record some demos for a a woman writer singer named Allie Willis, mm-hmm. who was our friend and super talented. I love Allie. She's the greatest. We were very close. We we both didn't have two nickels to rub together, really. Mm-hmm. We weren't destitute. But what's funny is um, she went on to write the theme song to the TV show Friends. Oh, wow. Uh-huh. Oh, wait a minute. What just happened to my... Wow, what's going on here? Hold on. Sure. Hold on. Yeah, no problem. Um, no problem. I had you on, I had you on headphones now. Um, so she wrote the Friends. She wrote September for Earth, Wind, and Fire. She wrote... She, she went on to be like an incredibly successful songwriter. And, and But we were recording her demos up here uh, at, at Bearsville. And John Hall happened to be... Uh, in, in at Bearsville for some reason, and he uh, and my brother and John they knew each other. And John told my brother that they were looking; they were going to add a drummer. Mm-hmm. And he introduced me to John, and I, I, I arranged to come up and audition to play with them. And I did; I auditioned, and and uh, that was like a really coveted gig. I bet um, they were my favorite band on the planet. By the way, um, uh, I knew about them before before they had their hits before dance with me and still and of course still the one i did with them but the, i knew them i went to see them at max's kansas city in new york i saw them a few times they were like they were just like they were my favorite band so that was like i was just blessed i mean i don't know i don't even know how else to say it i mean being in the right I place mean, at the right time just, too right i mean if you hadn't been at bearsville that, that might not have yeah. happened exactly Right, exactly. right, right. I actually played a couple of tracks before you came on air, and still the one was one of them, and um, also played uh, Gabriel. So, got to get some of that stuff out of the way. And of course, the first recording you did with Orleans was their um, 1976 Waking and Dreaming record. Exactly. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. That we did that in Los Angeles. Yeah. Hang on one second. Are you there? I'm here. I'm here. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm just wrestling with my <laughs> my wireless headset, which is so much easier to to hear you. So okay. yeah, that was nice. That was 1975. Right. Right. Um, right. I you know it's funny when we did the uh, uh, when we did the the Ali Willis sessions. She hired a a guy who she knew who was a friend of hers to do some background vocals with a few singers that he put together and, and he was, his name was Luther Vandross. Oh my. And, and I'll never forget Luther 
came up and we went out to dinner at Beanie's. I don't know if you remember, there was a place called Beanie's here. Nope, I it's don't. It's now called Puccina. Oh, it's okay. Called Puccina now. Yeah. yeah. So I remember Luther, you know, he was, he was very heavy. And we sat down to have dinner and the wait just brought out um, menus. And Luther said, okay, thank you. Uh, just right now, bring me a nice big piece of pie a la mode with some vanilla ice cream on it. <laughs> like, get that out here, and that and while I'm while I'm looking at the menu to see what I want to what I want to order. Oh for, my! For oh my! I'll never forget that. I'll never forget that. Anyway, I I want to be careful because I don't want I want to get to play a bunch of music, and I don't want to talk. I, wanna, I don't want to talk, you know. You know I'll, I'll rein you in. I got you covered here. No worries. But that's cool. I mean, right. this is the good stuff, though, these little side stories that come out. Oh, so yeah. so mm-hmm. you did Orleans, and then it's like, my goodness, Jerry, then Peter Gabriel came a-knocking. How'd that happen? Um, that I don't know exactly. Uh-huh. But John Hall had quit Orleans. Yep. And, and uh, Sadly, I was crushed, crushed. And uh, it's funny. I ran, I saw John maybe a year later. I ran into him, or I don't know, in New York. And, you know, he, I honestly, I remember, this is what I, how I remember it. He, he said to me, because when he called me and said he was leaving the band, I, I tried to I tried to talk him out of it. I, I really tried to appeal to him. I mm-hmm. said, you know, like, what's it going to take, blah, blah, blah. So um, when I saw him a year or two later, he, he got a little choked up, and he said, you, he said, you want to know something, Jerry? You were the only person that tried to talk me out of leaving. Aww. Aww. And uh, I was 18 or 19. I mean, uh, you know, I loved Orleans. They literally were my favorite band, and because my girlfriend in high school went to college at Ithaca College. Yeah, that's where my daughter time. goes. Yes, I know that. And the first time she came back, she came back with an LP of a band. She said, you got to hear this band. They play around Ithaca all the time. They're great. And it was that first Orleans record. And I just became a huge Orleans fan. Wow. And then she went back to college and dumped me. <laughs> um, and, and then, but a year later, here I am driving into Ithaca, riding into Ithaca in a tour bus. To do a concert at Ithaca College <laughs> with Orlean. So it was. Was she still was there better. when that happened? Oh, oh yes, she was. Oh, absolutely. I love it. Did she try to come say, hi, Jerry? Jerry, remember me? Oh, no. She, I mean, of course I remembered her. She's, she was my girlfriend in high school. So right. I invited her to the I invited her to the show. Aww. But, um, you know, so anyway, uh, uh, John quit and I went down to LA to. I don't know what, to just kind of hang out with my brother and friends. And, you know, it's 19 or 20 years old. And in that, in that interim, somebody handed me a cassette tape of um, this, the first Peter Gabriel record, the one, the one with Salisbury Hill on it. Yep. And, and they said, this guy needs a drummer, and uh, would you be interested? And uh, I, was, I listened to it. And it was the weirdest music I've ever heard. I didn't know who he was, and I never heard of Genesis. Really? Okay. Um, yeah. But I, I listened to the, to the cassette, and, the, you know, Moribund, the Burgermeister, and, uh, <laughs> you know, a, a barbershop quartet, all these weird, bizarre, like, uh, and, um, you know, because I just come from Orleans. Right. You know, I was listening to the Doobie Brothers, Motown, Little Feet, you know, like, it had to be kind of black or black influence. Right. And right. Peter Gabriel, that first record, there was no black, no black influence. No, completely prog. Yeah, very Eng- English, very yeah. English. And, and so I thought, okay, I'm going. It, it, it starts in England. We've never been there. It pays really well. I, you know, I need a job, and it's a challenge. You know, I don't know what I think of this music, but you know, I'll do it. It's a, you know, it'll it'll be a challenge. So I did it, and um, and that lasted about ten years. Amazing, and you uh, were on some worked, of the biggest hits. And then well, he- I was on, I was on the, uh, the second, third, fourth album. I was on some of the records, so some of it, yeah, but not all of it, because at that time I had a conflict of scheduling, and I had, Peter changed his schedule, 
and I was going, I did a record with Paul McCartney, and Peter changed his <laughs> schedule, and it was exactly the same time, and I, I couldn't back out of the McCartney record. I just couldn't. So, right, right, right. Um, so that was kind of, that was through the, that was the beginning of the end. I don't know if Peter got, you know, um, insulted or something. I, I really don't know. And uh, it's unfortunate. But, but you know, did 10 good years. Things, yeah, yeah, all good things. And it was time to move on. Kind yeah. of, now, yeah. is, that where you, is that where you met Tony Levin when you were with Gabriel? No, I had met Tony before that. Okay. Um, in, in New York. Mm-hmm. You know, Tony was living in New York in a fashion player and whatnot. And through, through the circle of friends and stuff, um, uh, you know, but, you know, again, I had an older brother who was paving the way. So, you know, I, I, I can't say enough about him or thank him enough. Right. Um, so, I don't know, one day if I make enough money, maybe I'll buy him a Tesla or something. He already, he, already, he already has a Tesla. So Aww. Buy him a second one. That's so sweet, you guys. That's I'll awesome. A Fer- a Ferrari. I'll buy him a Ferrari. Oh, wait a minute. He already has a Ferrari. Oh, my God. Um, he has a Tesla and a Ferrari. He's okay. Well, he, he sold his Ferrari and bought the Tesla, actually. But, oh. he, you know, there's nothing, you know, what do you get a guy that's got everything that he wants? Nothing. So, nothing. Nothing. Um, anyway... So that's that. So I'm going to let you take a, take it from here. That's okay. That. So where do you want, where do you so want to go we did Gabriel for ten years, and then Hall and Oates. I just want to get through some of these bands that you have played with, and then I want to get into current day because I want to talk about Green uh, Dreamland and just all the stuff you're working on because you're you got some right. great stuff coming on. So okay. So Gabriel, then you went to Hall and Oates. You did some time. Well, with, go ahead. Yeah, but no, it was at the same time. In '79, I started working with Daryl and John. Oh, and and, and and I was I was working with Peter. I mean, I was going back and forth from Peter Gabriel to to Daryl and John. I was going back and forth. I mean, it was it got to the point where we I finished the tour with Hall and Oates in Tokyo, and I flew to London <laughs> to and and then started as rehearse for rehearsals to start. Rehearsing for a tour with Peter Gabriel. So I was going back and forth. It was really, those were very uh, uh, incredibly fortunate and magical days. Yeah, they were. And they both, they both, at that point, they both still really liked me. (laughs) They all really liked me. Um, So I did that, those, and then, you know, Daryl and John wanted me to stay with Daryl and John. Right. Um, But I was loyal to Peter. I had an allegiance to Peter. Um, Although, I have to be honest with you, the what the music with Daryl and John was more, much more up my alley because it's that rock and soul. Yeah, you know, they have the Philly, the Philadelphia background, and that was my, you know, growing up, I was a, I was a snob, a black snob. Mm-hmm. You know, the music, the music wasn't black. It wasn't Motown. You know, I didn't want to know about Dylan. I didn't really the Beatles. You know, I liked them, but you know, uh, if it wasn't funky. I, t- I didn't really, I wasn't interested. Right. You know, right. something like 12, 13, 14. But, so, um, uh, yeah, I mean, but Daryl and John was, uh, that was, those were some of the best shows I've ever played. And you played on some of their uh, big albums, too. Well, it, yeah, I played on three records. Ecstatic yep. Voices and Private Eyes. Right. You know, um, and then they went on to be like the biggest act in the music business uh, mm-hmm. for Mm-hmm. You know, it all through the or it, well, I don't know if anybody's topped them at this point, but yeah, it was that was an awesome experience. And I, of, you know, and I, lo- of, I loved it. I loved working with them. And of course, Daryl has Daryl's House Club now, right in Pauling. Right. Yeah, uh-huh. you guys do a little Played secret. There many times. Yeah, yeah, sure you have in different incarnations, yeah. and uh, yeah, has he have uh-huh. have have you like been in touch with him since those days or? No. No. Yeah. No, and I think from you know I I don't want to say snubbed, but you know when they they um they wanted me to stay with them real badly, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. very badly, right? And uh, and and I didn't you know I, I was I was loyal to Peter, you know. Right. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, that was so, a good gig yeah, you I, had. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I get very wrapped up in the fam the family thing, you know, like it become connected and the Peter Gabriel thing was we became very close all of us and 
Um, I don't know. I just, it wasn't even thinking about business. I was never, I never think, I was never thinking about business. Yep. The, de- the deal that they were, that they wanted to offer me with Daryl and John, I, I would have been a multimillionaire. Right. Uh, many times over. Right. But I, w- I didn't even think about that. I wasn't even thinking about that. Yeah, you were following your I heart. But I, yeah, I, I, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't quit Peter. You know, he's kind of, he kind of re- was relying on me. Yeah, you know? and, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, what I, was the, I took that serious. What was the biggest show as far as audience you ever remember playing? Was it with Peter Gabriel or who would it have been? Yeah. With? Yeah. Yeah, we, pl- we played uh, the Faith Day Humanity. Oh. Um, forgive, forgive my French. Outside of Paris, I think it's a, the communist festival. It was a big opportunity every year. One band, I think Pink Floyd did it the year before us. Wow. And I think there were, I think, I think there were 180,000 people at that show. Jeez. Wow. Um, and that was, yeah, that's just like where it's a sea of people. A yeah. Sea. Yeah. Yeah. You um, probably can't see anything but the first couple of rows. And then after that, it's just like, you can't make people out. It's just, wow, that's amazing. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, and, and, but what you can, you can make out is the sound of right. 180,000 people. Right. That's like, that's like a tsunami yeah. coming coming at you. Man, oh man, oh man. Yeah, that was that was a big show. But I've got to be honest with you, I I played some really great shows. Uh, some of my favorite shows at the old Pinker Street Cafe yeah. in Woodstock. Yeah, I saw you there. Or or and at the Falcon. Yeah. Which uh, Tony Falco? I'm just going to put a shout out for Tony. Forgive me. But are you, you kidding? Know, I do that, that every show. It's not, <laughs> not funny. No, I've seen you at some of our. Of, yeah. of, you've been to some real in shows. I oh, think, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. But I, I just want to say for anybody there, you know, because, you know, it's not that far from where, uh, the, where the school is, just across the river. Oh, it's yeah, the, the 10 Falcon, minutes. It's, the Falcon, it's an awesome, awesome venue. Yeah. And Tony Falco is, uh, he's an amazing guy and a great, very, Big supporter of music and that. Absolutely, and yeah, I can't say enough about that place. So, any any yeah, plans I mean, to go back? Any any plans to oh, play there again? Absolutely, absolutely. Great. I, you know, it's just a little tricky because when I go there, you know, we, you know, we play there with Reelman in the years. You know, the the, steel, the music of Steely Dan. There's ten, twelve guys in that band. I have to be careful. None of them want to play a gig, right? For like forty bucks, right? And, Right. And, uh, and, uh, but, you know, because we sell that place out every time. We oh, play. yeah. Oh, yeah. They're we're standing pack, room only. Pack them in. Right. Right. So, um, yeah, we're going to, of course, we're going to play there again. Yeah. Right now, I think he's, he's opened up to a kind of a, a limited audience. Yeah, he is. So. I've been there a couple of times. Um, the outside is really cool when he did that this past summer. And then, of course, now he yeah. moved inside and just doing the upstairs. I don't know what his capacity is. I don't know if it's 50% or 75 I don't know where it's at. I've been a couple of times, but it's pretty cool. Um, so, yeah, we look forward to hopefully getting it open full bore, bore pretty soon. That's for sure. Um, so right. now let's talk about... I, you, I mean, again, people, we're we're talking to Jerry Murata here. You guys uh, can look up his web, website, look at his discography. I mean, you could literally talk to this guy for 24 hours and still not have talked to every band that you've played with or recorded with. So right. mm-hmm. I'll, I'll just go to that and just say jerrymurata.com. Let's talk about Dreamland and let's talk about Jersville. Let's talk about you recording because you're you're making a name, quite a name. You have a name for yourself as a producer as well. So right. let's dig mm-hmm. into that. Let's let me talk to me about Dreamland and how you started that that partnership there. Well, Dreamland is a very interesting scenario because Joel Bluestein, who who started Dreamland, and uh, I guess you could say we're partners. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, he. He, he started Greenland in the early, mid-80s, and uh, by the early 2000s, when Napster and the digitizing of music basically destroyed the music business. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, 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 and it's never recovered um, still, but um, he shut the studio down. So I'll just tell people, Dreamland is in Curly, New York, just, um, just outside of Kingston, between Kingston and Woodstock, and it's a residential uh, recording studio. 
in an old church built in the late 1800s. And there have been bands like the Fleet Foxes and the National, the B-52s did, Love Shack there. Um, I mean, I think, well, who was there? Not Phil Lesh or one of the Grateful Dead. Bob Weir? Guys. Bob Weir, maybe. Um, I don't even remember all the people. But Linda Etter, I did a record with her. Uh, wonderful singer. Um, uh, I don't, you know what? I can never remember all the bands. So that now, right now, we have a, a band called the Goo Goo Dolls that are in there. Oh, really? Um, uh, they're, yeah. Wow. Uh, awesome band, awesome guys. And, um, who, you know, we just have with people coming in. Regina Spector, um, she was coming in all summer last summer. Um, she left the city. She has uh, a child and uh, her husband and blah, blah, blah. And fleeing COVID last summer, she, she rented a place up in Woodstock. And then she started coming into Dreamland just by herself because we'll lay down piano tracks for, for her new record. Right. And uh, anyway, people will know who she is. I don't know if you play any of her music, but, but people, she has a lot of, you know, fairly big fan base. Right. Anyway, right. Um, and then there's many, 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 many other artists you know over the years oh a whole so, bunch and dreamland right. recording has a killer website too because it's a really unique space i mean it's in an old church right so very yeah, cool yeah. it's got the stained glass in there you got the high ceilings the acoustics are, must be phenomenal yeah it's great awesome place uh yeah and we have a tremendous it's definitely not you know it's not a home studio that's for sure right Right. And so, yeah, so I took it over, even though I, I, Joel closed it, closed it down. He shut the place down, and I believe it was shut down for about seven years. Mm -hmm. And I approached him uh, uh, to see if he, because uh, I thought maybe, why don't you let me take it over? And because I had some projects uh, coming, and I thought it would be great to have a space like that. Yeah. Um, he discouraged it. Um, he tried to talk me out of it. Wow. Uh, it was funny because he said, Jerry, you and I are very close friends, and I'd like to keep it that way. <laughs> so I'm just telling you now, don't do it because it sucks. I hope, can you say it sucks on the radio? Yeah, you can. can say sucks yeah, you can say okay, that. Yeah, he said, he said it sucks. Right. Um, and, um, and so uh, I did it anyway. And, you know, now occasionally when I see him, I always... I always, uh, I always joke with him and say, hey, I thought you were my friend. Why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you stop me? Why didn't you stop me? He's like, Jerry, I told you not to do it. I told you not to do it. Oh, that's great. That's anyway, great. Anyway, you know, it's little by little. We've built it up. Um, it's, it's awesome. Yeah. It's super busy. In fact, I'm sure, I don't know what some of your other, I, I've seen, I see that you've had people you know, awesome people like Danny Bloom. Danny Bloom. Recently, David Barron was he, just here. Um, and yeah. it's so funny. I didn't even realize it when I booked everybody, but you're all like in the recording business as well. So it seems like both right. of them have been very busy during this time. Awesome. It's like, it's just been, I, I, I gotta be honest with you, Rita, I've been almost embarrassed to say it. Um, this past year, I've been busier than I've been in like 10 years. Right, right. Um, and the studio has been just, it's just off the hook. Yeah, because people can't tour. So they're making uh, music. Exa exactly. Yeah, they're exactly making music right. so that when things open up, they're going to all have fresh music now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so good stuff. Now, you've sent me some music. Um, let's talk about some of the things you're working on here. Um, yeah, I saw please, you Flav. I saw you with Flav. Let's talk about that. Yeah. yeah, I produced a record with a guy named Flav Martin called Soul Redemption. Um, very proud of it. Awesome record. Uh, of course, I enlisted Tony Levin, and uh, I got Mark Showman, my good buddy, a guitar player, phenomenal guitar player. Um, and, uh, we made a great record together and we sort of made it a duo record, you know, mm -hmm. um, I, I did the production, played drums and percussion and you know, whatever else. And, uh, Flav wrote these great songs. And so, yeah, I, 
I think I, I, what, I think we I sent you. Um, you have a track from that that record called "Please." That, you know, yeah, awesome. You know, awesome record. Uh, you know, I don't know. Yeah, singer songwriter. You know, we toured Europe about two years ago. Uh, and uh, I was at your hard to, I was at your hometown show when. The Bearsville, shall we say, was not up to where it should have been years ago. And um, you guys had to move it last minute to the Woodstock Community Center. Oh, that was for the bucket list. Yeah. Oh, that was the bucket list. Okay. That was the yeah, other thing. That, that Okay. That was, yeah, that was with Tony Levin and Phil Kagan. Yes. 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 Okay. Okay. Yeah. And that was recorded. Tell me, what's Jersville? That's at your house? Yep. Yeah. That's in my house. Yep. It used to be, in, I have a little house that I bought years ago that um, I had my studio set up in, but then I bought the house that I live in, um, used to be, used to be, belong to Stefan Lassard from the David, the Dave Matthews, Dave Matthews band and, and Josie, his wife. Oh, um, nice. And they broke up and uh, blah, blah, blah. And they, they, you know, Josie bought another house and. We're all we've all remained good friends, right? Uh, with most Josie more than Stefan, and so I, I bought um, the house, their house, and um, I put my studio in the basement. Nice, it's a big, big basement. So I built a studio in the basement, and and uh, it's an awesome studio. It's huge, and it's not just your average uh, home studio because, of course, being a drummer, you got You need a lot of space. Yeah, you do. You can't just you know, all my other buddies that that have, um, like Tony Levin does, you know, he does a lot of remote tracks, people send him, but he um, is just sitting in front of the computer with his bass and he just needs two, two, two channels and blah, blah, blah. You know, with me, I've got three drum kits and a whole percussion table and, you know, I need a million tracks, a million, <laughs> you know, guys. I just need a lot of space. Yeah, so. yeah, nothing simple, sure, so. simple about that. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. And what's this other project that you're doing, Young Love, with Derek well, and Bobby and Dave? Okay, Young. Those guys have a band called. They used to be called Outland, and then because there's a million bands called Outland, they changed their name to OGD. Yeah, you know, uh, their 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 initials of their last names. We made a record called The Big Game, um, and uh, we're, we're, we're pretty close. Once the Goo Goo Dolls leave Dreamland, we're going to go right in and do their next record. Nice. Um, so, but I produced that. Uh, that was a lot of fun to do. Very different. All these records um, that you have, and hopefully you're going to play something from each one of them, um, that they all, they're all very, very different. Nothing... Nothing is even close to the same. Now, do so, you play on everything you produce, or not always? I, I, I generally I do. Mm-hmm. With OGD, they're a three-piece band, and they have a drummer. Right. So I didn't. I didn't play. I played maybe a little keyboards, and uh, maybe I sang a little bit on some background vocal or something. But that was it. Right. 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 And um, let's talk about the lovely and talented Sarah Parada. Absolutely. I mean, I don't know. You know, I, I just can't say enough about Sarah. You know, we we got together, and, you know, started toying with the idea of working on a record together. Um, and the process um, of making this record uh, it was five years. Wow. We, we were working on the record for five years. You know, not, not every day, but, um, you know, it took time to figure out quite... I've heard some of her other stuff, and it was... I, I kind of heard her in a different way, and, um, and so and she was kind enough to let me uh, do my thing on a couple of songs, like, to see what she thought about how it was and whether she... You know, uh, it, she thought it would work, right. and uh, I, we've just made a phenomenal record. Oh, that, that's awesome! That, that record, that record is just—I'm um, very—I'm really proud. I'm, I'm proud of all the records, right? 
Right. That record, I'm super proud of that record. I put a lot of time and energy into it. I, and, I, put this, I and it was a lot of it was Sarah and I working by ourselves, mm -hmm. um, okay. working on arrangements, and you know she'd come in, she'd have a song, an, an idea for a song with like six sections, and I was like, whoa, 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 like the, you know, let, maybe I think you've got three songs there, not one song. So let's break it down and let's see, you know. Let's let's simplify it, and you know she was she was very uh, cooperative, and uh, you know the, we worked great together. And right. sometimes I deferred to her, and then she's married to her husband Jay Parada, is a guitar player and a music like a musicologist. I mean he's he's so deep into music and 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 record LPs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's a fierce LP collector, vinyl collector, yep. and he's he's just awesome. And he he played on the record. He co-wrote a couple of songs with her. He um, he was kind of a, a spiritual advisor along the way. Yeah, um, that's and, awesome. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, it was a real team effort. Well, you got some great things you're working on, that's for sure. And I'm going to talk about one more thing, because how could we not? But then we're going to get to the music, because I've only got about 20 minutes left here of airtime. So, yeah, Marotta Brothers Band at Martha's Vineyard. Is that happening yeah. this mm -hmm. summer? Um, if, they're, if there's, you know, if they're allowing, you know, gigs yep. to play, um, I hope so. I mean, I spoke to... Charlene at the, P the Portuguese American Club, which is where we set up shop last year. No, two years ago. Last summer, of course, there were no shows. Right. Um, and they're hopeful. You know, we might have to start outside and then move it inside. Right. Um, talk about the, the band. I mean, you and your brother are both drummers, but talk about the rest. Who else yeah. is in there? Phen phenomenal band. My friend John Zeman, the guitar player, is a friend of mine. And we, uh, we played together. I, I had this idea, and I wanted to do it for a long time. The um, It had to be, because my brother has a house on Martha's Vineyard, and he spends the summers there. So um, I, I spoke, I talked to John. I, talk, I talked to my brother, who was a little apprehensive, more than a little. Um, <laughs> and and then uh, he's, he's too busy scoring television shows and making, you know, millions of dollars. Oh, nice. But, um, but I talked him into it, and then uh, I got John Zeman to help me because the band had to be, they all had to live on Marcus Vinny. Right. Sure. It just, it just had to be that way. So he, 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 we, we got John's daughter, uh, Zoe, who, who looks like she's about 14, <laughs> and she's a great bass player. And then uh, we had a couple different keyboard players, but uh, Sam Rothberg is the keyboard player um, in the band the last couple of years. And then uh, was a, Rick and I, and then we have a singer named Joanne Cassidy, who is a world class, just a total find. I mean, she's 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 a killer, killer singer. And what do you guys voice. play? We play every Wednesday night. Yeah. At the port, we we started out playing at a place called Lola's in Oak Bluffs, a restaurant, oh, that a bar restaurant that had a room for for um, music. And then uh, a couple of years ago, Kathy, the woman who owned it, sold it. And the new owners didn't really want to do music at night. They, they didn't want to do what we were doing. So we went and found, um, we found another place called the Portuguese American Club. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, the, like the, you know, the community center, you know? Right. right. Uh, it's, it was, uh, it's an awesome, awesome place. And... Uh, that was really, it just worked out perfectly. You well. must have some so. interesting guests that show up in the summers at Martha's Vineyard. Well, I guess, um, well, you know, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of famous people. Yeah. Carly Simon the lives there, doesn't she? Carly's there. Um, those. You know who's a big Marana Brothers fan? Bill Murray. And if he's on the is on if he's on the island, he's at every gig. And then yes, Bill Murray. So Bill, and we've even gotten Bill up to sing with us. I and love Bill, that. Let me let me tell you something. For you know, nothing fills up a tip jar like when Bill Murray walks around the room 
<laughs> with the tip jar, and he and, and he holds it up in front of you. Oh. That you know, and 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 he'll come back and then, and then I'll count the money, and there'll be like eight hundred fifty dollars. <laughs> that's beautiful. Like, From four people? Yeah. No, only kidding. No. <laughs> No, the, no, the place, it's, it's, there, it's, always, it's, it's always packed. Right, of course. It's pa- packed mostly, a lot of my brothers, my brother belongs to two kind of high-brow golf con- kind of country clubs. Yep. And, you know, with people with private jets and blah, and, you know, and those people, you know, they tell you that you find $100 bills. Amazing. Thrown into the tip jar. Right. And, you know, we, we get a lot of those people, and they're great. Yeah. They, on, a, on a Wednesday night, I mean, they, 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 <laughs> you know, they're looking for something to do. Yeah. Know? And it's live music. That, right, exactly. Yeah. So On Martha's yeah. Vineyard. And to see world-class music like that, hello, that's worth the trip to Martha's Vineyard no matter what. Yeah, some good you stuff. Know, and, you know, I'm a little, it's, it's so far, our Carly just hasn't shown up. Really, I, I I kept thinking Carly and I produced a couple of tracks for some something for her yeah. that we did on the vineyard, and my brother's been working with her for like forty years, and they're friends. I was I was surprised, right? Surprised that um, Carly, you know, I guess she's kind of a recluse at this point. I yeah. don't know. Yeah, well, maybe she'll surprise you. Maybe after having to be a recluse the last year, people will now, that normally don't go out, maybe they will now. Who knows, you know? Who knows? Maybe. Who knows? Hopefully. Who knows? Um, So I want to play some music and um, of yours, of course. And Jerry, it's always a pleasure talking to you, and it's always great to see you. I do hope to see you sometime with one incarnation or something right here in the Hudson Valley this summer. You got any plans for doing anything, or just every waiting and seeing what's happening? No, absolutely. Well, reeling in the ears for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, Sarah Parada, we're gonna, you know, we'll, she's gonna go out and start playing. Um, I don't know what else. What other things are there? I don't know. There's other things. Well, and but, and people but, can yeah. keep and, up with you on on like social media. You have the Jerry Murata Facebook page. You have your website jerrymurata.com and um, and Dreamland Recording. If anybody out there wants a professional recording studio, Dreamland Recording in Hurley is a place you might want to check out as well. Great website on absolutely. there. And um, and we're doing we're doing. I'm going to plug. I'm, I I was. I was. I started doing what was going to be a monthly live stream from. Greenland. Oh yes, 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 yes! I saw that today. So mm-hmm. We did one in February, and then the Goo Goos moved in on March first, and they're going to be there till the end of um, May for sure. Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe even a little beyond that. So wow! I didn't do it in in March, and then um, and that we're going to do one on April eighteenth. You're going to do it twice. Um, that. We're going to do twice, huh? and the I'll tell you the afternoon show is for all of my friends and fans uh, in Europe. Yeah, yeah. Who are five, five or six hours ahead? Mm-hmm. Uh, so you know, I said two thirty, so that's going to be seven thirty, eight thirty. You know, at night, and I, I just came up with this idea. I thought, let's give it a shot and see, and because if we at eight, the second show is at eight o'clock. Right. In the evening, and that makes it like one, two, three o'clock in the morning. Right, and, but that's uh, good for people. All, right, they're my all. My friends can't stay up that late. They no. I wouldn't be up that <laughs> And the nice thing for the eight o'clock show, that works well for people on the West Coast, too, right? Because that's earlier there. So you're kind of getting exactly. Europe and you're getting the U.S. at a perfect time. So this is going to be a live stream from Dreamland, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay, April 18th, there's a 2.30 and a 8 p.m., and it's Jerry Murata and Rock City yeah. Rock City Road. Um, I call it Rock City Road, of course, if you're from Woodstock, you know why. Yep. And I just want to say, you know, the band is a um, phenomenal band. John Putnam, guitar player, singer, writer. Mike Biseglia, um, who works with many, many people, yep. uh, including Suzanne Vega um, and, and many others. And then Danny Weiss, keyboard player. They're all my friends. They're all great players, my favorite players. And then I, I got, I wrote Joanne Cassidy, the, the singer from the Murata Brothers band. Oh, nice. I, I wrote her into it. So you guys, um, you, this is an opportunity to get a taste of 
of what a, you know, a killer world class singer sounds like. Um, and the woman who sings with the Murata Brothers band. Yeah. So she's, um, yeah, she's, she's gonna sing. And, uh, she did the one in February and that's up on my, on my YouTube channel. Okay. Yeah. Um, so people can watch that. And then we're going to do this next one on April 18th. And I, hopefully people will tune in. Oh man. I, I think so, Jerry. I don't think you'll have a problem getting people to tune into that. That's so cool. I'll, uh, I'll be sure to, uh, mention that again, um, after you know next week as well so to get people listening to the april 18th live stream that you're doing so super cool so i'm gonna start this off i'm gonna play the bucket list i'll get in a couple of tracks here i thank you for your time i look forward to seeing you live in person soon and um stay safe and be well my friend thank you very much all right jerry have a good one take care you too bye-bye all right, you're tuned into 91.3 WVKR, Independent Radio, Poughkeepsie, New York. I'm your host, Rita Ryan, 545 here. If you missed part of that interview or just, you know, turning in, tuning in now, we're recording this. So it'll be uploaded later as a podcast, as well as um, on the YouTube channel, Local Motion. Let's play some music here with... Um, with Jerry Murata. This is with Phil Keegy and Tony Levin from the album called The Bucket List, Sometimes 11, 91.3 WVKR.
you stop What you set up to do The sun that drops Comes back around for you What you thought You would want It's just a shadow now Of what you WVKR, Independent Radio, Poughkeepsie, New York, Sarah Parada, produced by Jerry Marotta, today's local motion guest, and we heard the song called Don't You Stop. We also heard Phil Keegi, Tony Levin, and Jerry Marotta as part of the Bucket List album that was recorded at Jerry's Jersville studio. The track was called Sometimes 
11. A huge thank you to Jerry Murata for being my guest here today on Local Motion, jerrymurata.com, of course, all over social media as well. And again, he's doing a live stream on the 18th of this month from Dreamland Recording Studios. So you may want to check that out. He's doing two shows, a 2.30 and an 8 p.m. show that evening. Again, that's April 18th. And, uh, oh, you know, really, you could play 24 hours and, and of his music just that he's recorded on and it just does not end. So I think what I'll do now is I'm going to play one more. It is just about time for me to leave these wonderful airwaves and I'll be back next Wednesday with another recording engineer, Mr. Scott Petito. He's also been on a ton and ton of records. He'll be my guest next week. In two weeks, I will be o- uh, joined by the co owner of Colony Woodstock, Neil Howard, will be my guest. In three weeks, I will be joined by drummer Aaron Comis. Um, he was is the drummer for the Spin Doctors. So lots of great stuff coming up here on Local Motion. I'm really feeling blessed with all these great guests. If you miss any of my shows or you're on YouTube, please consider subscribing to Local Motion on YouTube, as well as wherever you might stream your music, Apple Music, Spotify. Just look for Local Motion and Rita Ryan and you will find me. We're going to go out with this one track. This is by Flav Martin and Jerry Murata with the great Tony Levin on bass. This was recorded by Jerry Murata at Dreamland Recording Studio, the album called Soul Redemption. The track is called Please. I'll be back next week. Stay safe. Hope everybody's getting their vaccines and uh, we'll catch y'all next week. Until next time, I wish you all peace. <laughs>